Hey guys, EVP Man here, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to install the Nest Doorbell. Let's check it out. Now on the channel we reviewed a lot of different doorbells. Um, the primary most popular one I would say has been the Ring, until Nest came up with their own version. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do the unboxing, we're going to do the setup, we're going to walk you through the process of how you get this installed, and then uh, we'll do a comparison. I have a ring doorbell, and that ring doorbell is defunct. It actually died a couple days ago. So looking forward to testing this one out, getting it installed, and we'll see uh, what my experience is with this one, and I'll share with you what I found the differences to be. So let's get right to the unboxing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when new videos become available. Now one of the things I appreciate from Nest is they do a really nice job of uh, packaging their products and they give you everything that you need to install, install a doorbell or any of their products. So here we have uh, the doorbell and it's I would say it's around the same size as the ring, um, around the same thickness uh, and you know so far it looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and look at this in a couple seconds so we'll put this over to the side. Uh, we'll go through here. We have again some miscellaneous information. Uh, little sticker saying that the home is protected by NAST as well as the installation process. We'll put that aside. Uh, you have uh, this little controller and this is going to be installed by your doorbell um, chime box. So that's not going to go outside so don't freak out. This is going to go at your chime box. We'll put that to the side and then we have here the mounting plate and it looks like, hey great, it has a uh, yeah, this is uh, another component. So uh, this is going to be the mounting plate. This is going to go right on top of it. And then our doorbell is going to snap right here. All right, now the other neat thing about Nest and the way they package their products is that they give you everything you need in order to uh, set up your doorbell. And while there's a lot of different parts here that could be intimidating, it is an extremely easy process as I'm going to show you. So they even give you the drill bit necessary if you have to drill something in. Um, they give you all these little tools that are in here. Um, the screws, again, every single thing that you need in order to set up the doorbell. So let's talk about that process next. Now one of the things that could be of concern to you is how involved and complex is it to set up a doorbell. Now let me show you something and so you can see how easy it is. There are literally just two screws that you have to work with. Now if you can put up a picture, you can install this doorbell. Uh, the cabling that you have in your existing doorbell is going to connect to these two points. All you have to do is make sure that you can install the bracket on the surface that you're going to be working on. And if it's wood, very easy. Um, if it's cement, then you're probably going to have to drill uh, because the holes that exist for this bracket may not align with the ones that you have. In my case, my doorbell will be going on a wood surface, so it's going to be extremely easy to install. So let's go to the uh, doorbell chime system so we can show you how uh, this little unit that we have right here, as well as these guys, um, actually work. All right, so now for the next step, before we actually go through the entire installation, you'll want to download and install the Nest app. Now this is available both for iOS and Android and once you install the app it's also going to give you all the instructions that you need to add the doorbell. Alright so here is my uh, Nest system and I have uh, several cameras uh, and just recently reviewed the Nest Cam IQ, uh, the outdoor cam which is this one right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this cog that's up here, tap it, and I'm going to scroll down and you'll notice these are all the products I have and I'm going to choose add a product. Now, by adding a product, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scan the, uh, the product that um, needs to be added to the system. Now, that QR code that you're seeing there appears here at the very bottom where I have my finger. Uh, that's where your QR code is, and that's going to help the Nest application recognize what device needs to be added, and I'll give you the instructions to set it up. Now here is uh, the recognized uh, device. So after I did the scan, it said, all right, we're going to be working with a Hello Doorbell, and we need to go through and check out the compatibility. There are some instructions here. I'm not going to go through the video itself, but it will tell you what you need to do. So as you can see, this is my doorbell, and it's going to vary uh, from home to home how your doorbell uh, wiring looks. Mine is a two-wire system, so literally what I'm going to do is take, uh, make sure that I know that the first position is the red, second position is the white, and I'm going to put the uh, red 
into one of these and the white into the other. I'll probably go white to white and red to gray and then I'll put the appropriate connectors into each one of these places. Make sure that you power it off your system when you're doing this and then this will be mounted inside of your chime box. All right, so this is what the end product looks like. So you can see where the wiring is, and you can see that I was able to uh, glue with the sticky surface of the um, that little transformer pod um, on the side. So that's all you have to do. And now we'll just put the cover back on and go to the outside. All right, so next step in the process is to remove the doorbell, which I already have. And I'm going to attach those two wires to the back of the Nest Hello. Now the next step is to install the base plate as well as the cover plate that you see right here. Now um, I try to get it as straight as possible but I have a, uh, a glass that's covering um, kind of my entryway right there so this is as straight as it's going to get. Now the next step is to continue with your app, uh, follow the instructions and it will automatically connect and establish your connection with your Wi-Fi and set everything up for you. All right, so this is what the Nest website looks like, and I have multiple cameras. Uh, this one is a Nest IQ uh, outdoor cam, and this is the original Nest outdoor cam, as well as I have some other Nest cams throughout the house. Uh, front door is here, and you'll see that once I click in, uh, into it, going from the thumbnail, just takes a second, and then you can see how clear it is. And it's actually picking up both the audio as well as the, um, you know, the image itself. I have the ability to zoom in, so I can zoom in right here, and right now while it's not super clear, uh, just by hitting this button, uh, what will happen is it will kind of enhance the image and clear things up, and here it's um, a little clearer than it was before. Uh, and it's still daylight, it's uh, starting to get dark here, but it's doing a really nice job here of picking this, uh, the light up. So I'm going to pull back just for a second, um, go out back to the uh, normal view, so let's go ahead and do that so you can see the normal view again. And uh, you also have the ability, just like the other Nest Cams, you have the ability to set zones. So what you'll see here is each one of these dots represents a zone and an, an activity that took place. So I've had um, some of my son's friends coming over, and you can see that each one of these zones got triggered. And then as they were triggered, it's because a different person came in. And you can see each one of these points. So I've been getting notifications of this as well. So I set up some zones, and let's go ahead and edit these zones so I can show you how that works. So I'm going to choose the first one that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to move that zone right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch that out. So I just uh, put these out just so you can see what they would look like. I'm going to bring that down, bring this down right here. And all I'm doing is I'm painting this area because anything that gets into this area is going to be uh, cause a trigger, right? Um, so this one is done. And I'm going to do the same thing with this next zone. So notice I have one here uh, on the on the ground. So I'm going to go into that uh, red zone too. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch that out because I want the entire floor there covered. Move it back just like this. And then what this is going to do is any anything, a ball, a person uh, that walks um, into the driveway and steps in this landing zone or this landing zone, I'm going to get notified. So that's my second zone. And I'm going to look at my third zone now, which is this one right here on the wall. And I'm going to edit this one because it's coming out a little bit too much. Um, so I'm going to move this back a little bit. So I'm going to move it right here. And I'm going to stretch it out because I don't want it to pick up cars that are coming out. And then this is going to cover this wall. And the reason why I have it this way is because if this one doesn't detect it coming in, the floor doesn't detect it when it's when they're coming in. Um, as soon as their shadow, they touch the wall as they're coming in, this one's going to capture them as well. So you can have those multiple zones, and that's going to notify you uh, when people come in. And then obviously you have this little timeline here that you can break down either by hour, by minute, or by second. All right, there are um, a lot of other configurations that we'll take a look at, and let me show you a couple of them. So by clicking on this little cog here, the wheel, you can see that I can turn the camera on or off. I can set quiet times. So um, you know this is going to um, allow you to turn off your home's indoor chime. Um, you still get uh, notifications, but the doorbell won't go off. You have your schedule you can do here as home well. Away and assistant, uh, you also uh, have uh, features. Um, so the camera will use the phone location to turn off uh, when you leave your home, and then when you come back, it. Uh, uh, to turn on and when you come back it turns it off so this is something that we see with the nest security cameras as well so hey guys this is what the national low video quality would look like i'm in chicago and it's just 6 30 so sun is not out it's actually starting to get a little bit darker but this will give you a sense of what kind of video quality you're going to get 
Now, the neat thing about the NSLO is that it's going to start recording as soon as someone comes into my zone. So I have this is a zone, this is a zone, and the floor is a zone. And what I see in front of me is the doorbell has the ring around the uh, doorbell button is breathing, indicating that this is actually recording. Now, it is capturing my voice, and it's actually capturing video. And as I get closer to it, I can tell also that it has a little um, LED that is on, indicating that the doorbell is powered. So a couple of these things, what it's going to do is detract anyone from coming to steal any packages, hopefully, because they can see that they're recorded. And at the same time, it's recording everything that's going on for me so that I can listen. Now, this is just my motion, right? As soon as I ring the doorbell, I will get a notification as well that the doorbell has been rung. But if someone stands here... I'm going to be able to see them, and I'm going to be able to hear them. Now, for those of you who are interested in what the night vision would look like, just wanted to show you this is at 3 o'clock in the morning here in Chicago, and this is the kind of quality of the image that you're going to get from the camera. Now, I do have a light source coming up here, but this is definitely, as you can see, in night vision mode. So I can zoom in, and you can see here's my car still parked outside and what's going on around it. And obviously, the closer you get to the camera, the better the image quality is, and you can see a car passing by as well. Remember, as I'm watching this, I also hear all the audio. All right, so now let's take a closer look at the app so you can see what you can expect from uh, the Nest doorbell. So here's my doorbell. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose it. And what I'm seeing is a live view. Now, I subscribe to the, uh, the Nest service, so I am streaming continuously. So I can just monitor what's going on in my, on my doorbell or my front door just by simply clicking in. Uh, it's telling me that there were 51 events, so there was 51 triggers today. That means that either someone came or a package was delivered or the doorbell was rung. I, if I tap this button here, it's going to give me a, uh, a full view. And with the full view, you do have pinch and zoom, and you saw that in my sample recording where you can zoom in and out. And then also, if um, someone hasn't quite made it to the doorbell, I can tap this icon here and actually um, greet them before they even uh, ring the doorbell. Let's go back there again, and we'll go to this view. Now, I'm also hearing, while this is streaming, this may not be coming through the recording, I actually, because of the, the way the system is set up for me, um, I'm actually listening to whatever's going on outside. Uh, th I have not spoken yet, because I haven't pressed the talk button, but I can listen. So if someone go is, st is standing in this area, I can hear what they're saying. Now here's another uh, view, and then this, these are the actual trigger events. So you'll notice that it's saying it's seen people come in. So for 10 seconds, it saw someone come in. It saw another motion. So these are my zones, because remember I had the zones here that were triggered. And you could go to any of these events. And any of these events, so here I went to pick up, I think, a soda into the car. That would happen at, I think, 609. When I tap on it, here I am coming with the soda inside and going to the door. Well, I can take this trigger event and then turn it into a clip. So it's going to take that and convert it into a clip that I can save and download for use later. Uh, so that's an option that you have. You also have filters. Uh, so if I choose the filters right here, I can say, what is it that I'm looking for? Because I may not want to have every single thing. Maybe I just want to see the doorbell rings. I don't care about the motion. So you can uncheck these and then just see specific things. So you notice that there's a couple here. So if it identifies a person, show me. If it identifies motion, show me. If it identifies a, uh, a doorbell ring, um, you can say that as well, or any of my custom zones. And all you have to do is check or uncheck whatever you want. Um, I have five days worth of history is what I subscribe to, so I can go back in this calendar setting as well to see uh, my history of, of those events now, as we well. We saw some of these features in the web version, but you can have quiet times, and this is going to allow you the ability to set which times you don't want to get any kind of notifications. You also have home away uh, so you can go ahead and set these modes so you can say that use the phone location so as I walk away to enable or disable functions because it's going to be triggered by my phone um, any kind of schedules so set up a schedule when you want your camera to turn on and off right uh, and this is specific camera uh, when you go into notifications you could also set notifications but unfortunately there's no scheduling of notifications so you just can't say I want the notifications to start at a specific time and end at a specific time you're just determining do you want push notifications? Do you want email notifications? What kind of notifications? And you're, uh, you're just going to get those. The familiar face function is something that was surprising to me because this is something that Nest talks a lot about, but it's not available in every city. So, again, I'm in Chicago, and it's interesting. <laughs> I don't know why they do this, but there's no face detection allowed in Illinois, I believe. So it says that it's not available.
right? So that's kind of disappointing because Nest doesn't really tell you that. Uh, it says that it may not be available in all areas, but it would be great if there was a, some type of list that told you in your state this feature is not available because it would be great for me to have when my kids come home to be able to say uh, so-and-so came in or so-and-so uh, left. And unfortunately, that feature is not available. So you may not have that feature. Visitor announcements. Uh, this is really neat. So I have, and I'll give you guys a sample of that a little bit later in the video. If the doorbell rings, in addition to my mechanical chime that goes ding dong, um, all my Google Home devices will say someone's at the front door. So I have, have that connected here. So all you do is you turn that on and you go to the registration option and it will tell you someone's at the front door uh, in addition to the actual ring. So that's pretty cool as well. Someone's at the front door. So now because I subscribe to Nest Aware, these are some of the things that you're going to see. You get personal alerts, continuous video history, close-ups as you've seen in some of the reviews I've done, activity zones which we showed you also, and then you're able to share your clips. Now another thing that um, I like setting, and this is going to vary based on the type of internet that you have in your home, you'll notice I have quality and bandwidth. So I have a very strong network connection. Uh, you've seen me review some net mesh networks uh, in my home. I either have my Netgear um, mesh network, my Asus net network, and then I've also reviewed um, the uh, Amplify network, right? So I currently have Amplify running um, all of my smart devices. I have it in a separate segment in my home. And I also have unlimited internet with my carrier. So you notice how it says here 300 gigabytes per month. Well, that's not an issue for me because I have unlimited. So what I did is I took my quality and I pumped it up to the highest quality. If you find that when you install your camera, you don't have really good quality, it's probably because it's either here or here. So if you have unlimited, swipe it up. I also have night vision set up to automatic. I'm not sharing my camera um, you know, to, with any family member because we just uh, have the same ID. And then uh, we do have the status light. And I love the status light and that's that little light that's going around like this. You, I love having that on my phone or on the doorbell because it just uh, tells people especially if someone's going to drop a package or someone walks by that you're on camera. And I'm really about deterring or deterring um, any kind of fraud or um, somebody stealing stuff. And if they know they're on camera, they're going to be behaving and they won't take anything. It's like having that sign that says you have a security system. You have chime duration, you have microphone, uh, spoken language, and then you have um, Wi-Fi connection, and this is where you can change it as well, and then where your doorbell location is, and then you have some technical information that you can look at with firmware and things like that. Now there are two options here at the very top that you may ask yourself why would you ever use these and that's the camera on off and the quiet time. The camera on and off is something that you may want to use especially when you have a party in your home and you have a lot of people coming in and out through the front door because you don't want to get all those motion alerts. So you can turn off your camera or you can set up a quiet time. I've used this both, uh, both of these settings in various situations based on what kind of event I have in my home. Alright, so the other thing you can do is have some canned responses. So I rang the doorbell and now what I'm going to do is send a response. So you have three responses that you can give. This is what the first one sounds like. Hi there. You can just leave it. Thanks. This is what the second one sounds like. Just a sec. We'll be right there. And this is what the third one sounds like. Hi there. No one can answer the door right now. We'll be notified you stopped by. Now the neat thing about these responses is that, you know, definitely this is great for packages and the other two are just um, okay, right? I wish they had the ability where you can create your own. I would assume that they're going to happen soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to be able to use your own voice as well to record a uh, canned message. But definitely a nice thing to have. So guys, that concludes our in-depth installation review an overview of everything that you can do with the Nest Hello doorbell. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.